Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two out of five of uh, this uh, ultimate talent guide that I'm making. So basically a guide to help you guys pick the right talent. Uh, so this is part two where it's all about the beast talents. Last week it was the undead talents, um, but yeah, this week is beast. So uh, let's quickly jump to it. And uh, yeah, just before we do so, guys, click subscribe. I'm gonna do much more videos like that. If you wanna see part three, four, and five, and other awesome videos, uh, other deck guides, uh, yeah, subscribe, it's free. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the first one we have here is the first leader, and it's uh, Old Murkai. So Old Murkai uh, has a few interesting talents. His first one is Tip of the Spear. Tidehunter spawns at Old, uh, Old Murkai's location instead. Uh, so if you guys are familiar with Old Murkai, basically when you spend gold, um, when you spend gold after playing him, he's gonna spawn some Murlocs. So then uh, instead of spawning at your base, they're gonna spawn at Old Murkai's location with Tip of the Spear, right? The second talent is Electric Eel, where we have uh, attack briefly stunning enemies, which can be pretty good. In some uh, circumstances, stunning is always fantastic in this game. And then finally, we have Marathon of the Murlocs, where March, March of the Murloc, which is the whole ability where you spend gold after playing the leader, lasts uh, an additional five seconds longer after deploying, right? So um, for me, this is an easy pick, and it's obviously the Marathon of the Murlocs one. So basically, uh, instead of being five seconds after you play your leader, it's gonna be 10 seconds, which means you're gonna have much more Murlocs spawning everywhere. Um, and yeah, you combine that with some unbound uh, units, and this uh, makes this a extremely strong deck. So I actually have a deck guide uh, that I released this week. So go check out that video. Uh, I'm actually gonna link uh, this one in the description uh, if you guys are looking for a deck with the uh, old Murkai. Um, so yeah, for me, Marathon of the Murlocs, easy pick for me. Uh, but you could also go for Electric Eels if you want to. And I think Tip of the Spear kind of sucks. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that one is uh, quite underwhelming because the whole idea of old Murkai or the best decks that uses Old Murkai want to do like a split push type of deal. So uh, yeah, next up we have Hogger. So I have another video on Hogger. Uh, and uh, yeah, Hogger is really, really good in the meta right now uh, because you're going to cycle back to him a lot of the time and you're going to make, uh, you're going to apply so much pressure uh, with Hogger. So what are the talents? We have Hamhawk where he also gains 10% uh, max self each time he's played. This is freaking good. We have Spoiled Meat where he gains poison. This is also really good poison just it's just basically more damage right so that's really good and we have fatal frenzy that uh, his ability says on death bloodlust nearby beasts right so uh yeah for me this is an easy pick as well and it's ham hawk because uh i'm playing hogger in a cycle list so i also have another video on the hogger cycle uh list and so just cycling him over and over again we're gonna make him more tanky which means he's gonna be, uh, be longer on your opponent's tower which means he's gonna make uh, more damage right so uh, ham hawk definitely the uh, best talent for me here uh next up we have charga right so uh honestly guys i don't freaking know i don't understand her and i don't even understand that joke here um yeah comment down below if you guys understand that joke i, I don't I don't, I don't get it. And for the talents, I, I don't know as well. I wish I really knew correctly. I don't like Chalga that much. Uh, but yeah, so the first one, Nature's Grasp, root two additional nearby targets, but deal half damage. So I guess this is more more utility for Chalga. Uh, we have uh, Cavernous Mist. So deploy cost reduced by one gold. So for me, I guess uh, gold reduction is never a bad thing. So I think probably that would be the best talent. But we also have the other one, with Spirit Passage, where minis played for five golds, gain a level and, and deploy in stealth, right? So the level is uh, not really noticeable, but the stealth can be good. However, do we have any good uh, high cost minis that want to gain stealth? If we think, if we think about it, we have the Huntress, we have uh, like Molten Giants, uh, we have a few other stuff, but overall, those units really don't require stealth. So like, I would personally go with Cavernous uh, Mist. Um, 
Yeah, I think just uh, goal reduction is pretty good. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. Spirit Passage. Uh, Midis played for five gold, so it's not the Midis that are five gold or above. It's uh, played for five gold and only five gold, right? So I guess it's especially bad, uh, especially with her old shenanigans. Anyway, so I would go with Cavernous Mist. I think just goal reduction is just the best. But honestly, guys, I don't fucking know. So um, yeah, t tell me down below. Uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions here. Next up, so we have our first uh, units. So we're not our leaders. Let's get into units. It's the uh, angry chicken army, right? So uh, uh, what are the talents? It's uh, the first one, Snacrifice. I like all the puns with the beast units. Snacrifice. So nearby beast allies can consume a chicken to heal themselves. So I guess that's okay. You can heal your, your other beast. But if you're not playing um, Angry Chicken Army in, uh, some, in, in a deck without other beasts, it really isn't useful at all. Furious Foul. So here, uh, our chicken gains fury. I think that this completely sucks. Um, the reason we're playing chicken is just to swarm and then uh, bait basically a chain lightning or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't think this is ever going to be that useful. If your chicken army is going to survive, well, you don't really need that fury. They're already going to make uh, apply so much damage. And then the last one, walking crate, deploy in a protective crate, one destroyed chicken emerge. So uh, I guess this is really for the memes, I would say more. I don't think that one is great either. Um, I understand the idea. It's a little bit like the dragon eggs, right? Um, so you play it in defense and they're only going to deploy once they're being attacked. But like, is that really important? You could just deploy the army uh, on top uh, of the unit and deal with it. So uh, yeah. For me, I would go with uh, Snacrifice here, where uh, nearby beast allies can consume a chicken to heal themselves. Uh, I guess this is the best because healing is always good. If you if you could split, you could split your army, and then maybe you could heal two lanes at the same time. But honestly, guys, I don't think these talents are really worth it. Uh, next up, we have the Gnoll Brute here. So uh, yeah. I love the Gnoll Brute. Some people think it's mid. Uh, I love it personally. It's a pretty basic unit. It swipes in front of it. Uh, so it has a little bit of AoE. It's a little bit tanky. Uh, what are the talents? So the first one, Pillage. Where he deals siege damage. For me, like Gnoll Brutes are never really going to apply damage on turrets that much. And anyway, you're not playing it for the damage. You're playing it uh, a little bit more like the tank to deal with uh, like the swarm units and stuff. Uh, so I think pillage isn't the best or at least not in the current meta and uh, we have rabbit so reduce deploy cost by one That's freaking good. I think that's the one I picked uh, Well a little bit of a spoiler there, I guess uh, but you could also go for thick hide where he gained Where he gains armor, right? So well, having armor is pretty good. He's gonna be more tanky I don't know is that more significant than being played uh, for two-thirds of the price I don't think so. Uh, so yeah, I would go for Rabbit. That's the one I went for. But Thick Hide could be good in some circumstances. Uh, I play, anyway, I play most of the decks. I play my Gnoll Brute. I play the Shaman as well. And I play the Shaman with the talent that gives armor. So that's especially why I'm not picking Thick Hide. And I'm picking Rabbit. Uh, for our next unit, we have the Harpies. The Harpies. The Harpies are fantastic. And uh, actually, they have a few good talents. So, um, well, a few good and one bad. So uh, the first one, Trick and Collector. They gain the minor trait, but their cost is increased by one. This can be useful, okay? But personally, I don't like having my Harpies costing one more. Uh, I like to play my Harpy more for the damage. So I'm going more for the Infectious Swipes, so where they gain poison. Poison is basically more damage. It's fantastic. And then we have Talent Dive. Deal double damage on the first attack. I think that one is the uh, the worst out of the three because um, normally your uh, your harpies you want to keep them alive, right? The issue with the harpies is that you have to play them with a with a tank, right? So uh, I guess talent dive is to get as much value before they die. If you're not playing any tank in front of it, but the whole idea of playing harpies is to have like a tank in front, and then uh, the harpies are gonna deal that whole damage. You want to keep them alive anyway, so. Uh, I wouldn't go for Talent Dive. Tricky Collectors can work. Um, I, I, one of my guild members, Para, actually plays um, this trait for in the old Murkai list because, um, yes, he's going to spend more gold, but then he's going to get more gold afterwards because they now have the minor trait. 
Um, so that could be really good because we're going to have much more Murlocs. Um, but for me, I took Infectious, uh, infectious Swipes because uh, I play Harpies for damage. And I love to have a lot of Cycle in all of my lists. Um, but yeah, both of them can work. Uh, but yeah, I think Trinket Collectors, I'm going to get them when I'm going to, when I'm going to be able to like switch in between. Because I feel like they can be uh, the Miter trait can be really good, but in specific lists. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have the Murloc Tide Hunters, right? Uh, they have a uh, few good talents here. The first one, deploy with a bubble that blocks the first attack. Uh, that one can be fine, I guess. Uh, for me, it's really between two. It's between that one and Morlock. So sorry, I don't have the name for the first one. Uh, let's call them the Bubbles. So for the uh, the bubbles can be good, uh, especially to deal. I think it works with like uh, against like chain lightnings and stuff like that. So that's really good because uh, the murlocs are really weak to basically any spell that has some splash damage, right? Um, but once again, something like Blizzard is not gonna work. Uh, it's still still gonna go through. Um, any well like Holy Novas, they're good against that. Um, like if a splash mini or if a AOE mini is already locked onto the murlocs, it's not gonna change anything, right? The second attack is gonna kill them. So uh, yeah, but that kid work that can be that's pretty good. I'm gonna give it to you. Careful aim here. Careful aim here. Uh, I think it sucks. Uh, having more range. Range is good, okay? But I don't think uh, the whole idea behind the murlocs is the range. The um, this is not the issue, right? The issue once again, it's like a little bit like the harpies is they have to play them uh, with a tank. Um, but if you're playing in a uh, with a tank and you play them uh, in the right position, well, normally they're going to survive. And instead of having more range, which I guess makes them more safe, uh, I would play more locks where they have one additional murloc. So that's more damage. So for me, I would go with more damage with better positioning, and that's how I'd pl I would play my murloc tide hunters. But uh, the bubble one can be pretty good. But more locks is uh, the best one, I think. And uh, it's a really funny pun here. Um, yeah, and I think when you split, it goes two and one, which is good because you can have like a big push, bigger push on one side and a weaker push on the other. Next up, we have Polymorph, which I didn't even know it's Beast. I thought it was like Alliance because it, it feels like a spell that Jaina would do. Um, the talents, I don't think uh, Polymorph have really great talents. I took the Golden Fleece. Uh, where one sheep becomes golden, killing it, grant one gold. But I think this is um, not really good. It's I think it's there's a lot of the times you're not even gonna kill that uh, one golden sheep if the uh, golden sheep is the one behind the enemy base. It's gonna be um, well not gonna be behind the enemy push. Well then it's gonna be really tricky to kill it, and then uh, you won't have uh, the gold, right? So like sometimes you're gonna play. Uh, play polymorph and they're gonna deal like 80% of the health and then the sheep is gonna turn back um, to its original form and then you're gonna kill it right but then you're gonna kill it and not get the gold and that happens a lot more often than I would have wanted to next up we have uh, exploding sheep so killing a sheep damages nearby uh, enemies so this I think is really good right because when you polymorph all of the army you polymorph all of the army and then uh, just killing a single one is gonna apply a splash damage and doing like a chain reaction killing the uh, whole push. So I think Exploding Sheep is uh, pretty good here. Uh, and then we have Stable trans uh, Transfiguration where it lasts twice as long, but she regenerate health very quickly. Um, so this for me, it, it's kind of like a cheat death type of thing where you were when you're have, applying a lot of pressure well then you can play the polymorph um, and then your whole push is going to survive and applying more and more pressure but for me I would just play cheat death uh, cheat death I just feel it's better in that situation um, so yeah for me I would definitely go with the uh, exploding sheep here next up we have the prowl the prowler I just keep thinking of the villain in uh, spider-man when I when I read the the, um, the name, so uh, yeah, the prowler dashes right. And now with the talents, we have that on the prowl that uh, gains stealth and stun the targets when attacking from stealth. Uh, I mean, I guess on paper that's good, but the thing is, like the prowler is already dashing and already applying a lot of pressure, and it really doesn't matter 
I think if it's stealth or if it's stuns, because it's the best way of countering it, it's just playing a, 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 a unit in front of it. So like most of the time I see a Prowler approaching my base, I just play, I don't know, my Hogger, my Dole or whatever, any Bruiser type unit, and then the Prowler is going to charge on, th on that unit. Uh, so even if it's stealth, even if it's stun, uh, the unit is going to stop, uh, stop being stunned and then uh, attack it, right? So uh, I think Prowler is used to uh, maybe destroy some unit that are weak or uh, or on their weaker side, I would say, health-wise. And uh, yeah, like you're going for like single targets and stuff. Um, but the, the way to counter it is the same even if your opponent has on the Prowl or doesn't, right? Um, so yeah, next up we have Pack Leader. So Grant, Nearby, Beast, Allies, 30% additional damage. So more damage is always good, uh, but that only works uh, in Beast um, type list. And then we have a Predatory Instinct where it deal, uh, deals double damage to enemies who are at more than 75% health. So uh, also that one can be good. That's more damage. Uh, it can one-shot some units that it might not um, if you didn't have the talent. But for me, all three talents are not that good. Um, but personally, I went with the uh, Pack Leader, but any of the three, are, I mean, are fine i think i think they're all bad but like you could go for any of the three is uh what i'm what i mean next up we have the quillmore finally a good unit okay beasts uh don't have good unit they have two good leaders two great leaders with that um old murkai and hogger and then they have a few horrible meanies so the angry chickens the raptors uh which which one which one is the last one we did and they have uh, a lot of really good minis with uh, like the Quillbore and the Harpies and uh, some other ones. Uh, but the Quillbore, really, really good, okay? Uh, and for the talents, we have Bristleback, deal a small amount of damage to melee atta uh, attackers. I think that one is uh, more on the weaker side because um, it's a small amount of damage, so it's not really going to deal with uh, splash damage, I think. Uh, please confirm, guys. I don't. I haven't taken that talent, but like, can it deal with like a angry chicken army or some stuff like that? Uh, if not, I think it sucks. I don't think it's really good. Then we have a tunnel vision where you deploy much more quickly, which means he's going to be quicker in the battle and uh, quicker at doing his job of maybe attacking the backline, right? So most of the time, I'm playing my Quillbore as like a tank, but sometimes I just wanted to like snipe a Pyromancer, right? And just by the time they deploy, he can get just melted and just be useless, basically. And then uh, finally, we have a Bramble Burst, so inflict poison on nearby enemies when emerging. So yeah, this can be fine, but the thing is like, you want to play your Quill... If you're using the style, you want to play your Quill Boar uh, in like a big swarm of um, units. However, if you're playing in a big swarm of units, he's going to die before he even spawns. So yes, he's going to do poison damage, but it's probably not going to be enough to uh, kill anything. So yeah, for me, I would go with uh, Tunnel Vision here. Uh, but yeah, so like a great unit, but I think the talents are lackluster. The Raptors. Uh, yeah, I don't like the Raptors personally. I think they suck, uh, and their talent sucks as well. Uh, the first one, the first one is strength in numbers. So deal 10% more damage for each Raptors uh, nearby. So I think that one uh, is fine. More, like I said, more, less gold, more damage is always good, right? So uh, in case of uh, in case of doubt, you just go for IV, either of these two. Um, and then we have fast food, so on kill, heal a small amount of damage. Uh, so heal a small amount of damage on kill, but they're all super squishy. So it doesn't matter if they're like at one health or at max health. Um, they still do probably the same job. Um, yeah, I think fast food is not really good. Uh, and then we have motivation, gain bloodlust while a chest or gold vein is nearby. So this can be good to challenge some gold mines, but then I think you would play the raptors um, just by themselves, um, like once. Um, but yeah, so for me, I would go in strength in numbers just because it's more damage. Uh, and yeah, next up we have the spiderling, spiderlings. Um, so yeah, spiderlings, they're decent units. They do their job really well. Uh, and for the talents, they have some good ones. So we have bloated carapace. Uh, explode on death, poisoning nearby enemies. So that's more damage, more AOE damage. Uh, then we have Frostbite. So 
where uh, it's more utility. We have the uh, ability of getting frost now. So um, spiderlings are not only going to poison, but they're going to freeze as well, which is really good. Can deal with uh, it defensively, can deal with some uh, big push. Um, yeah, I think Frostbite is really good, uh, but even better than a Frostbite, we have in Venom where they deal twice as much poison damage. So I think for me, that one is the best because that damage is going to be ridiculous. Um, yeah, I really love that talent. That's the one I picked. And uh, yeah, next up, we have the Vulture, and this is the last one from the Beast units. Uh, the Vultures are fine, they're good for cycle lists. Uh, I've played them in my last video, my last hogger list, because they cost only one, uh, but their talents are lacklusters as well. We have Tended Rips, where attack dazes enemies for three seconds. So this is fine, but like a lot of the times, the Vultures are not even gonna uh, apply damage or do an attack. We have then Feeding Frenzy, the flood gains Bloodlust for five seconds when spawning a new Vulture. So I guess having Bloodlust can be fine if, if you're playing them like as a defensive uh, unit against some ground units. Uh, so like air to ground unit, um, that can work. Uh, but but uh, yeah, for me, I went for Migration where all additional vultures spawn in your base. I like that because uh, let's say you have a big uh, swarm of vultures, right? Let's say you do get a lot of vultures that are stacked up because even if they spawn at their base, they go back to that group. But if you're opening like chain lightnings or plays like a pyromancer or plays something that does AOE damage to those uh, vultures, well, they're still gonna have to deal with other vultures that uh, are gonna come back from uh, your base, right? So even if there's a single one, if that single one kills another one, then they're just gonna have to deal with a continuous amount of pressure uh, from the vultures, right? So uh, for me, I went for migration. Uh, and yeah, guys, I think this closes our part deux, part deux in French, uh, of uh, all of the talents for the beast units. Uh, next up, I'm, I wanna do alliance, but I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough experience with, with all the alliance, uh, alliance unit uh, next week. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, yeah, tell me how you guys feel. Tell me if I was wrong about any of those talent. It may be possible. Uh, comment down below all of that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.